was one week before December in a cold, dark dungeon room. There sat a fair witch mending her broom. She was tall and thin with lips of ruby blood. Sierra Selena was her name. She was tired and bored, reviewing horror movies day by day, because every single one was always the same. I'm sick of the scaring, the terror, the fright. I'm tired of loose plots concealed beneath booby delight. I'm bored of virginal final girls up against some hideous monster. And my brain hurts trying to make sense of some plot twist blunder. I don't like good movies, but I need something new. There must be more to life than just... Uh... Two? Moo? Rhyming is hard, you guys. Then the ground opened up and from hell twixt it came. Or, I guess, from Disney. Well, it's all the same. It was a little children's movie with a strong reputation for pleasing dark hearts meant for eternal damnation. That's it, boils and ghouls, have I got a plan. I'll review A Nightmare Before Christmas this season. Man, a film inspired by a poem that Tim Burton wrote. Then taken up by Disney, though at first they wouldn't gloat. When Disney saw what they had, they sent it away. Too scary for kids, at Touchstone Pictures it would stay. And the making of the film took years, three to be exact. Special care needed to be taken to keep the stop motion intact. And then there's the whole issue of directing. Who did what? Tim Burton's name precedes the title, but Henry Selleck should make the cut. And yet, this cute little film has taken up a life of its own. It's a favorite of every Hot Topic goth girl and anti-society clone. Jack and Sally are relationship goals. We feel Jack right down to our souls. But is this movie really worth it all or is it just Disney magic making us fall? Well, that's why I'm here, so let's take a look. Gather around my pets in my little nook. So the film opens up in Halloween land, where the residents celebrate their holiday plan. Ghosts, goblins, monsters of all delicious sort have turned good old Samhain into wonderful sport. And the ruler of this dark, abysmal land is one Jack Skellington who rules with a cold, bony hand. But alas, what makes a skeleton sigh? He longs for something more. All this scaring has left him dry. He wanders off in search of something more. And what should he find but this? A magic door. And through it, he finds all sorts of wonderful things. Snow, reindeer, red velvet, and sparkly silvery rings. Yes, Christmas has a land all its very own. And Jack loves it, truly, deep down in every bone. So how can he feel this joy each and every day? He'll take it back to Halloween Town and force it to stay. But pretty Sally, a doll, a real logical sort, knows that Christmas has no place here, and it's Jack she has to thwart. But how can you stop someone who's acting only out of love when you don't want to hurt him or anyone else in the world above? This movie has a villain, but Jack is the main conundrum, with all of his attempts to escape the humdrum. And 
that's cool. We all mess up from time to time. It's nice to see a Disney movie that recognizes that and doesn't turn it into some kind of crime. It's visually stunning. A real treat to see. And the music? Oh man, this is my kind of key. This movie is great. No, this movie is grand. Even if all of this innocence isn't quite what I had planned. And just like that, a change in Sierra Selena's heart. A tenderness growing. A brand new start. Could this be the end of the horror reviews? Well, what do you think? Will Walt Disney prove a sudden muse? She could adopt a child-friendly image, a smile, clear and bright. She'll give up on her old ways, inspiring fright. After all, what else is the holiday season for if not giving all lost souls a chance to become something more? Nah, man, fuck that shit. I know I would miss my blood, guts, and tits. So thank you for joining me, my lambs, my pets. Subscribe to this channel, cause you haven't seen anything yet.